Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel. In my career, I have served in the editorial board of several scientific journals. I've also helped organizing several conferences and I've served in the technical program committee of more than 100 conferences. With this experience, I have reviewed hundreds, if not even thousands of papers. And I observe some patterns that often cause papers to be rejected. So in this video, I want to summarize what are the most common causes for papers to be rejected and provide you some guidelines in order to try to avoid these mistakes and maximize the chances that your papers are accepted. Before we start, I want to make two disclaimers. The first one is that the technical component of your paper should be novel, it should be interesting, and it should be technically sound. And the best way in order to make sure of this is to work with your advisor closely and make sure that your research is actually impactful. The second disclaimer is that the points that I'm going to make refer to my field, which is computer engineering and computer science, although I think that many of these points can apply to several different contexts as well. Before we start, I noticed that about 80% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so it would really help if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video and even share the content if you find it useful so that it can reach a wider audience and can help more students. Thank you very much, and let's start. The first cause that I've noticed to be the reason for the rejection of many papers is poor writing. This refers, of course, to writing in poor English or having a content that is very disorganized and overall a very poor presentation of the paper. And this happens way more often than you would expect. So what this cause is, is, a, is a negative attitude in the reviewer's mind. So if a paper is poorly written, the reviewer is already deciding to reject it. And honestly, a good writing is a sufficient condition for a paper to be considered for publication. And then, of course, we should evaluate the scientific impact, the novelty, etc. So make sure to learn how to write papers. I made several videos about it. You can find the links in the description below. I made a video about how to write an abstract, an introduction, a work section, etc. And make sure also that your paper before it's submitted is reviewed by your advisor, potentially by your peers. And sometimes universities also have writing centers that can review the paper and cannot correct the technical content, but it can help you organizing the paper and writing in a better English that will increase the chances that the paper is actually accepted. The second reason that may cause papers to be rejected is the lack of motivation. So each paper is going to address a certain problem. So the first question in the reviewer's mind is going to be, why should we care about solving this problem? So what we want is that a paper addresses a problem that is important, that is relevant to society, that is relevant to science, that is relevant to your field. In one word, that does impactful research. However, it may happen sometime in science that we find a good solution, but we don't have any problem to solve with that solution. So definitely don't want that to be the case. But it can also happen that students focus so much on the solution that they are designing, and they forgot what was the reason to start studying this problem in the first place. So what it is very important to do is to justify very well in the paper and make a good case of why this is an important problem and why it is important to solve it. The third issue that may cause a paper to be rejected is the lack of novelty. So it's very unlikely that you're going to be the first person working on a certain problem. And very likely, there are going to be other papers that have studied the same or a similar problem, and they have proposed their solution. So we need to convince the reviewer that the paper proposes something new that advances the state of the art in that domain. So you may be studying a problem that is relatively older, and so a significant body of literature exists for that problem. So in that case, it's going to be harder to convince the reviewer of the novelty, and so we need to make sure that we have a very good case for this. Alternatively, you may be studying a very new problem for which very few papers have been published, and so it's going to be relatively easier to make a good case about why what you are proposing is new. But in any case, we need to make sure that we discuss not just why the problem is relevant, but why the solution that we propose in this paper advances the state of the art in terms of some 
new contribution. And this could be, for example, a solution that is more efficient, that considers some aspect of the problem that have not been considered before, that performs better in terms of certain performance metric, has more security guarantees. Depending on the field, there could be many uh, notions of novelty that you are applying, but the most important thing is to explain why you are better compared to the current state of the art. The next problem that I've observed that may cause papers to be rejected is the lack of a meaningful and comprehensive experimental evaluation. In our field, it is expected that a paper has an evaluation section in which you compare the performance of your solution versus the performance of previously proposed solutions for that problem. And sometimes it happens that this evaluation is not convincing. And this may happen for several reasons. So the first one could be that you consider comparison solutions, which are too straightforward. So for example, you just compare yourself versus a simple random solution. Of course, you perform better than random, but what do you do versus more recent solutions that have been proposed for this problem? Otherwise, you may, for example, consider solutions that are relatively old and newer solutions have been proposed that are better performing. So in general, you should motivate why you have picked those solutions and why those are the best that you should use in order to do some comparison. Another problem could be that the experimental evaluation is not comprehensive. So it studies very simple scenarios that do not reflect the complexity of the problem. Or similarly, the simulation environment that you use is too simple, it's too abstract, and it doesn't capture the complexity of the problem that you are studying in practice. So what you can do is to try to make sure that your experimental evaluation is comprehensive. It studies the performance versus different angles. So for example, you may consider scalability, you may consider sensitivity versus certain errors, different environments, etc. Then you should very well justify why you pick certain comparison approaches versus others. And also you should try to make the uh, experimental evaluation as realistic as possible. The best thing that you can do is to do real experiments. So use real devices, implement your solution and show that how the solution performs in practice. If this is not possible, what you can do is to use simulations, but try to make this simulation as realistic as possible. For example, using a real data set that can be embedded into the simulation and capture the complexity of the problem in practice. The final reason that I want to mention in this video is the lack of a good story. So the story of the paper is an overarching narrative that connects the abstract to the introduction, to the related work, to the proposed solution and to the experiments and the conclusion all throughout the paper. And this goes through the motivation of the problem, the novelty of the solution, and the actual proposal technical content, and then the evaluation of this content. So as you describe this story, you set up some expectations for the reviewer. So for example, you describe what are the limitations of the state of the art. And this limitation should be addressed in your paper so that you are actually advancing the literature by doing this and making sure that the expectation that you set up are those that you also then verify throughout the paper creates a coherent narrative that maximizes the chances that your paper is accepted. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to the channel, like the video and share this content if you find it useful. Thank you very much and see you the next time.